Everything done we need to done to keep the residents safe and at whatever we can. And that is being able to now bring firefighters in here and being able to train them on this equipment. Yeah. So so I appreciate all that um, that's going on with this because this is these these grants that we get through the Department of Fire Services um, over the coming years are instrumental because it's like something in the middle of the year that now we have a major project that we can take on. So we thank you for that. Yeah, well, that's appreciate great, it. great. And you went but down to New York City Fire Department? Uh, Deputy Chief Jeff okay. Marchetti and Deputy Chief Kevin Galligan, if you guys could come on over right over here. They're actually teaching the class. They went down and the FDNY has kind of been cutting hey, edge on a lot of this stuff. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, Deputy Chief Marchetti, Deputy Chief Galligan. Hey, so they, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Yeah. They actually went down and took a class, and now we're bringing all that information Great. back here. So it's 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 stuff that we it's it's invaluable stuff that now we're able to teach these our members. So you're doing like a train the trainer train, well, for your own staff. Yeah, these guys yeah. learned it. Now we're teaching the entire department. We're just about right. tomorrow's the last day. Correct? This is the eighth class today. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. So we've been at it for a while, uh, learning from those who have experienced it already, and uh, now we're just teaching the operational plan part of it to the whole department. That's great. Good stuff. That's so great. Nice to meet you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Can't see through. Oh, <laughs> What's up with these batteries? Why are they so... <laughs> uh, no. It's, it's, new, it's new technology that we're becoming familiar with. Yes. That, yeah, it's newer battery technology. Yeah. That, so they're not, they're, they're, they're fine in their normal state. Yeah. One of the problems is we've been running into schools and e-bikes, oh, proper yeah. chargers, a number of things like that that we run into issues with and they don't put it in a up yeah. and they get thermal runaway and then propagation they actually all those cells begin to actually get almost lift off gases and it yeah. becomes actually very dangerous so we can mitigate the hazard we just had a fire the other night room but we're able now with the equipment they were able to buy through the state grant to be able to put that stuff into cell one this is this is a perfect example of one right here this is the number of cells within a battery this is oh, yeah. actually your common household screw gun that you'd use yep so those oh, really? are uh, cells lithium ion yeah. cells uh, put together make a battery pack and the thing with the lithium ion that's so great is the higher energy density pack in a smaller area right we all want a smaller battery that lasts longer than the phone and so people can break creating this nice technology and chemistry in these batteries that work well like that but when they're damaged or under fire conditions uh, they don't work so well so we've been finding that um, with any damage to them they can off gas and go into thermal runaway cause a fire and spread to all the other cells and that's very hard to stop but, well, thank you. You. but now we have a video. If you can yeah, take a look, seconds. if you guys oh. don't mind spreading for oh, a second so the, so the governor and the lieutenant governor can see, I'll yeah, take it for you. You want to take it, it home with you? It's like a bowl. Yeah, 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 if you want to take a look, this is a video okay, of it. Steph, could you just explain while the governor watches? This is a lithium ion battery fire. This is what we're training for the exponential growth of fire. Yeah. yeah. You'll hear a small pop when the battery overheats. Guy gets up from his uh, couch, goes to check his hoverboard or scooter, mm. unplugs it. No way. That's what you were just holding. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I think I think the thing, the, the important thing to realize here, Deputy, I think you would agree. The important thing to realize here is these are stable in their stable form. It's when we have problems with them. That's what the fire service, we either catch all service, we call us, we show up, we do whatever we need yeah. to do to mitigate the problem. So that's why we're doing this training and, and, and it's instrumental that we get this done. So, because this is, we understand this is the way of the future. Yeah. We just be able to have to be able to calm Yeah. Down. All right, well, cool, we appreciate it. I wonder if we should be warning people though about yeah, I, I think the marshal's office has been okay. has been working yeah, with some information to be the first person to talk to. Okay, yeah, well, we'll, we'll come back on that. Hey, were did were all you guys on when the hospital went down? Uh, some of us were. It was like yeah, between shift were, change. Yeah. 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 What was it like? I mean, getting all those people out too. Um, I, I wasn't there. The chief was. <laughs> <laughs> the chief can answer that question. It was very us. busy, but these guys. I was outside. These, the, the men and women of the Brockton Fire Department did an incredible job. Uh, no, nobody injured, moving over 170 patients to safety. So they, they don't like to do a lot of talking. I'll yeah. talk for them, but they um, they did an incredible, they incredible job. They talk, but we're not here. I'll yeah. bet. Yeah, yeah. 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 So, 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 right so, two things we have to we have to realize. First of all, we're so honored to have the Governor Lieutenant Governor here. Uh, when Governor uh, announced she was running, one of the first places she came in the city of Brockton was this firehouse. Sure. Right, this firehouse is historic. It's the first electrified fire station in the United States of America by Edison. And I have to say, I was there on site during that 10 alarm fire. And the men that serve and protect and the women that serve and protect were heroes. The heroes. Because if the fire doors failed that day, it would have been like Kurt Russell's movie Backdraft. And everybody upstairs, we would have lost. So thank you all. Truly thank you on behalf of the 
the city, and the Commonwealth. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, we we'll make our we'll make our way out. But um, really, thank you for that and for the service that you provide day in and day out. Um, one of our responsibilities is to to really look after and support those who look after and support um, our communities, and and that's you all. So you know, however we can help today, we're talking about equipment and and, and training support, and that's always going to be there. But um, you know, whatever we can do to support you and your families. And we thank you because there are a lot of people we know too who are, you know, choosing to do other things right now. And, and we need people in public safety big time. So we appreciate uh, and respect and honor all of you who serve. So best, uh, best wishes going forward. And we'll get, we'll get out of your hair so class can continue. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They're on the clock, so we right. don't move. I know. Yeah. <laughs> and it's great to be back with you, Mayor. We appreciate yeah. it. Thank you, we Deborah. appreciate thank it. You, and. Deborah. And to, um, to Senator Brady and to, to Rep. Dubois and uh, see Rep. Cassidy's here, different others, President Lally. Um, thank you for, for the opportunity to be here. Absolutely. All right, we'll go, we'll go outside and talk to some more folks. But um, thank, you. Right, thank, you. Right. thank you. All right, thank you, guys. Thank you, Governor. Yeah. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I am really happy to be here in Brockton, joined by our Lieutenant Governor, Kim Driscoll. We just wanted to have the opportunity to come down and spend some time on the ground with folks. We thank Mayor Sullivan uh, for his invitation. We thank the, the work of our colleagues in government, many represented here today. Uh, but basically, we wanted to be down here to, first off, say thank you. We were just touring the firehouse with Chief Nardelli, meeting with firefighters. Uh, Bill, Bill, we appreciate all that you and the team and Archie before you know, have done. Uh, the men and women who serve out of this house, as the chief said, this is a historic house, the first electrified firehouse in the country. And, you know, what they were called to do and respond to a few weeks ago over at the hospital was truly incredible. And the fact that so many uh, people were taken care of, transported safely, 90 ambulances used to move about 160 patients on that day, the work that the firefighters did to sort of, you know, keep the damage. And there was extensive damage, we know, but it could have been so much worse. And so we wanted to come here today to say thank you for the Brockton uh, effort, the Team Brockton effort, the fire department. Uh, we thank Chief Nardelli and the team. We also thank the police, uh, Chief Perez and, and her team for their work, uh, all the EMTs. We had people respond from communities all around. It was really an amazing thing to see, including the Plymouth Sheriff's Department, uh, we thank them. So that's the first order of business. The second order of business is to commit to the continued collaboration. And I referenced Mayor Sullivan and his leadership, Senator Brady, Senator Timothy, Rep. Dubois, Rep. Cassidy. Uh, we have our new city council president, DeCastro, here. We have other city councilors represented. We thank you. Uh, this is you Fantastic. Rep. Mendez is here as well, of course. So, you know, I, I, it is also a message of, of thank you to our colleagues in government. Our new Secretary of Health and Human Services, Kate Walsh, is here today. Um, <laughs> delighted to have her on board. And, you know, the work that, that she has done, and before her, Mary Beckman, the teams at the Department of Mental Health, the Department of Public Health, the daily calls that have been happening for the last few to figure out the ways in which the state can help and assist in this time. It is a time of hardship. That said, it's a time where we know that Brockton will see its way through. This is an active station. This is not a stage. You know, we hope all goes well out on this call. our commitment to continuing in collaboration with local leaders and state um, leaders as well to, to do everything we can to get things back and up and running. And so we thank you for that. Uh, we're going to go do a few more visits after this. I invite the Lieutenant Governor uh, to share her any thoughts she has as well as the Mayor. Thank you. Hold on just a moment, Beth. But 
we're going to hear from. It's okay. Just want. I'll be brief. I just want to say we're really grateful to be here. I'll talk for thanks, as the governor mentioned, and also to, to pay homage to the training. Like these things happen, as some of the firefighters mentioned in talking with them. The biggest thing that ever happened in their career, but they felt that they were trained, that they were prepared because of the work that goes on all year long. So I think that's a tribute both to the state who provides some of those resources and grants, and also to the folks who are doing the work, leading the department, making sure that you're getting the type of training you need when you have a nine alarm fire happening in an active building where everybody needs to be evacuated. It really was a miracle if there were no injuries, and I think that's a tribute to the city and the work they put in on that training front. We say we train every day for the worst things that can happen, and unfortunately it happened, but you were ready. So kudos, Chief, and the whole team here. Thank you. That's great. Mayor. Thank you, Governor. Yeah, Thank you. Uh, I just I just want to be very, very clear. When the 10 alarm fire happened here in the city of Brockton, the first person to reach out to me was Governor Healy. Uh, immediately, Mara reached out to me. I thank you, Governor. I won't forget that. Second person was Lieutenant Governor here. Um, there really is a team collaborative approach right now. Number one thing was no one was injured, right? Now we have to pivot. We need to figure out how we can get Brockton Hospital back up and operational as soon as possible, right? And there's a lot of rumors, three months, six months, a year. I can just tell you right now that the administration, and all the state delegation and the feds and my office were working together. HHS, DPH, everybody's been great. The governor said we have a daily call. That's true, we have a daily call. I also have a, a, a subset call with uh, Brockton Hospital Good Samaritan. So again, Brockton Hospital is closed and we have to get them up and running. Good Sam's getting the other thing. They're getting inundated right now with patients. So the staffing is, is working on right now, but it wouldn't happen without everybody working together. So I'm just so proud that the governor and lieutenant governor are here. Uh, we are all in this together. We gotta roll up the sleeves and get the job done. But we are the city of champions. It's gonna take a champion effort, but we're gonna get there. Thank you. Terrific. I think we think that three months is still, you know, what we're what we're looking to uh, to meet. I mean, know how important it is, as the mayor says, to get the hospital open. Um, we're going to be visiting some of the other sites this afternoon. We appreciate, you know, those who've stepped forward, um, whether it's the urgent care, or the neighborhood health center, or Good Sam too, which has really been called on in this time to step up, seeing an inundation of patients. So it's about collaboration, and we're going to work expeditiously. Workforce is an issue; we know that, um, and we're going to continue to work through those issues. Governor, can I get your thoughts on the two R, well, the one R and B employee that is pleaded guilty and the driving school employee that is pleaded guilty? Um, just giving people, you know, taking bribes to get, get people licenses. Yeah, this story is a story that broke a while ago. I think uh, the RMV uh, months ago reported that there had been employees, former employees, engaged in these practices. They've been held accountable. They've been terminated. That's what we need. We need integrity in the system. The public needs to be able to rely on integrity in the system. So I'm glad swift action was taken. Are there any steps your administration is taking to ensure this kind of thing doesn't happen again? I think that many steps have already been taken and certainly we're going to look, not just with respect to this agency, but any agency, to make sure that the public trust is is upheld and, and, and true, uh, that people are trained and that if things are not done the way they should be, that there will be accountability. Governor, are you concerned about the quality of health care in this region? Because Norwood Hospital flooded. Uh, we got a hospital down in Brock and there have been others that have closed over the years. We go back 10, 20 years. I've heard some, uh, for instance, the fire chief from Foxport told me he's got to ship people up to Boston sometimes because Good Sam won't take won't take emergency patients. I mean, is there an issue here right now? Well, I think what there is is a commitment to making sure that there are no gaps in coverage. And I think you see reflected in all the folks standing behind me that there has been a real team effort to step up when something unthinkable happens and all of a sudden there are a lot of people who need to get to other places for care. So that is the commitment. Um, and it's not easy in this time in healthcare. There's a workforce crisis, right, when it comes to healthcare generally around the state. And in this region, you know, is not is not immune. But I am grateful to the providers who've stepped forward. I am grateful for the collaboration. We as an administration will try to do all we can to support our providers out there um, who have been, you know, overburdened in many instances already given some of the, shorting sta uh, the staffing shortages. So, you know, I think that's how we, we look at this. Um, and it's about, you know, making sure that you know, whenever anything happens anywhere in the Commonwealth that we bring to bear the resources to deal with whatever is happening. And, you know, that's that's what I think we saw happen here yeah. through the efforts of so many in local communities, in other communities, um, and, and with support and assistance of state and federal folks. 
Mayor, 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 for you real quick. Talking to some of your residents here, Mayor, they say wait times at Good Sam, six hours, eight hours, sometimes 10 hours. I think you'd agree that's untenable. What can be done today, tomorrow, right now to help these people? Well, as of yesterday, around? it was down to two hours. Uh, I mean, I understand people are uh, waiting in the ER, but I also know that the men and women that are providing the medical care right there are doing yeoman's work. So there's a sharing right now, a synergy between Brockton Hospital, loaning medical staff to Good Sam, Sue Joss and her team at Neighborhood Health Center. It's all hands on deck. Alan Smith and South Shore. So, I mean, two hours is better than 18 hours, which was last week. So they're starting to trickle down. At the end of the day, it's about trying to get Brockton Hospital back online and providing. That's why the secretary's here today, right? She, she's, she's a master. Mental health, behavioral health issues right now. BMC here in Brockton is helping us. High Point's helping us. Father Bill's helping us. It's all hands on deck. The secretary had something to offer to that as well. Just one more. No, yeah. I mean, so uh, the signature urgent care is open this week on Liberty Street, so that's the first step. But lots of times people are in the emergency room who don't need to be there so they can be treated in urgent care. Sue Jossett, Wade of Rocks, and open urgent care. We're finding sites in the field, different places. We're just going to reimagine in health care for the city. A Brockton Hospital's been there for how many years? I was born there and I'm 52, so I was way before that. <laughs> well, and so what we need is what, what Brock Hospital for the next 100 years 62. and what that's going to look like. And I think this community deserves our best thinking, our best thought, and our best resources brought to action. And I, I want to echo what the governor said, they, the cooperation and coordination across the region is really been spectacular. And um, to those patients who are waiting for care, please don't defer care. Part of the problem we're seeing in health care now is people defer a lot of care during the pandemic, but we have this disease debt that we're going to be paying down for the next couple of years. So, uh, but, but really, the, the city, this, this response was spectacular. I, you know, I've, I've worked in hospitals for 40 years, and what Chief Nardelli did and what the team at, 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 at Signature did to get those patients out safely is a miracle. Thank you. Guard council on the table. I'll leave that to you. I don't. I, I don't think we're going to need the national guard because uh, one of the other things the state did send was some of the uh, the travelers that we had from the COVID pandemic went and are working in Brockton and in Good City. So relief is coming. Just we're talking about it every day. We're working on it every day. You can't get manufacture people, but to the extent that we can find creative solutions. Remember, there's people whose jobs were lost in that fire as well. And so we want to make sure that those people stay employed, stay here in this great city, and work to serve the people who live here. And so that's what we're trying to do. Absolutely. And I think one message, you know, to the public is um, please don't defer care. And I know that there are a lot of people who are used to getting care at Brockton Hospital. Don't be afraid to go to other places. Folks have worked really hard to stand up and set up health care operations where you can get care. And we ask that you not be afraid to go to those other places. We just want to make, make sure that people are, are taken care of and seen and everybody's working hard to line up you know, resources to be able to do that. Thanks, everyone. Is there anyway? I'm not going to get the best of your I'll get some more. I know. I'm going to get some more. I'm going to get Great. So at the onset of COVID, you know how Brockton was going to be decimated with COVID. Sue Joss and her team, Dr. Chelly, they yeah. stepped up, and so the Talk Shaw Center you. in Brockton yeah. is a city asset. So they actually used it as a testing center for us. Really? Then a vaccine center. We did it so well with the help of Neighborhood Health Center that the governor at the time, Charlie Baker, he made it a regional site. So again, with the synergy and the relationship with Neighborhood Health Center, it's been awesome. It saved lives. It saved lives. So did you um, introduce our brand new pharmacy? So this is opening March 13th. Um, it's huge. We'll, we'll take you a quick walk through, but we're really excited. Um, there's so much more space. Our lines for pharmacy are just really, really, really long, and this will help help bring them down. And Mike Barabee is our pharmacy manager. He has a speech ready. I do. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it's exciting, you know, to be able to be part of the health center, completely integrated, and on the same platform. Where were you before? I. Well, I worked at CBS. Another question, so we just did the one. Again, Governor, Lieutenant Governor, have been awesome in terms of the fire. 
How's your influx of patients right now? You and I are on a daily call, but how's the influx of patients right now due to the closure right now? Sure, so visits are up about 30% um, from our last weekly number. It's all of our own patients who were going to Brockton Hospital, you know, ER, so it's actually patients we should have been seeing all along, but the sudden influx um, is a lot for us. We were very short-staffed. Um, Dr. Joe has brought his adult providers back 100% on site. They were doing four days of primary care here and a day of telehealth from home. So they're almost all five days a week. Um, our slots are filling. We're monitoring um, other slots to see if we can squeeze patients in just about anywhere. Uh, requests for interpreters are up, what, 75 or 80%. Um, so it's, it's a lot. Maria, do you want to talk about the behavioral health side of things? Yeah, so um, I'm, I'm not sure if you've heard this um, through the conversation that's, that you've had so far with the mayor, but um, across the city we're seeing a tremendous, um, just a tremendous burden on the behavioral health side of, of people's health care in the city, and of course we've felt it here at BNHC. Um, and our colleagues over at Good Sam in the ED have really been pretty crippled mm -hmm. actually by the amount of high acuity behavioral health needs in the city. So this is not new to, um, to Brockton or to the Commonwealth, I think we all know this, um, but of course with the closure of, because of the fire with the closure of Brockton Hospital, we've been seeing, you know, section 12 codes coming in here pretty regularly because they're not making it to the ED. Um, and then the ED, very overwhelmed. Um, we have um, numerous coalitions in the city to try to address behavioral health. So we came together really quickly and we're leveraging every tool we can, including the new Community Behavioral Health Center in Brockton, um, the BMC unit um, in Brockton that opened in October, which is super, a total game changer, as the mayor would say. Um, no, for real, it's been a game changer. You know, So I think for us to be able to come together and try to leverage every partner that we have is essential but we're still um, really struggling. Mm -hmm. What do you need most? Um, staff. Yeah, staff. And money to pay for them. Yeah. <laughs> you just yeah. told me on the way I was like, yeah. we staff, staff, staff and money to pay, money pay, for, to pay for it. Yeah. And I, I, you know, I think the, uh, the, if the behavioral health beds at BMC will, will replace the 16 or 22 beds that were the inpatient beds, just temporarily, Mr. Mayor, mm -hmm. um, uh, that were the Brockton, uh, you know, that, that's a facility to keep people safe move the, uh, the the detox and CSS patients out probably to high point, which you mentioned is that. Um, so that will give you, I think, the ED some immediate relief because it will be a place for people to go. Um, and then, but to do that, we need staff. We're going to need, uh, remember, we also, this is a community. Yeah. You know, yeah. Just yeah. because, yeah, yeah. yeah we really, no, after community. these three years of having that protection, um, yeah. there's a lot of individuals who are at risk for losing it. And so we want to do everything that we can. And again, work with our partners. Um, um, and, and then to ask the state to get that kind of help on behalf of the community. Yeah, no, we put a lot of time into it because we, we know how we can get to that with your folks. So, we'll be fine. Yeah. Um, well, this is really helpful. We love you nurses. Yes, we do. Yes. Yeah. Your mom. My mom, my grandmother, everyone, my aunts. Sorry, just. But uh, but this is great, and you guys are all. What are you? Pharmacy? Yeah. Pharmacist? Yeah. So, okay. nice. We'll take you back. Oh, oh, perfect. Oh, sorry. Get ready. One, two, three. Thank you.